Hello, Don Hall works with a new video about cones. I'm getting ready tomorrow to fire reduction cone 10 and I thought this would be a good opportunity to explain maybe to some of the beginners, maybe even some of your advanced people about what cones are, how they work. All right, so these are cones, Orton pyrometric cones. They uh, look like this. This is a uh, cone 11, this is cone 10, and this is cone 9. Now, I'm going to put them in the kiln, I'm going to make a, kiln, uh, a cone pack here with some clay, I'm going to show you in just a second. And uh, they melt at different temperatures. The cone 9, it melts around 1280 Celsius or... 2336 Fahrenheit. So this, when these start to melt, it tells me that the kiln is just about ready to shut down, to turn it off. This is a cone 10. It melts at about uh, 1305 degrees Celsius or about 2380 Fahrenheit. And this is a cone 11 uh, pyrometric cone and it, it melts around 1315 to 2399 uh, Fahrenheit. It, uh, we, we want to watch this one carefully because if it melts then we know we've gone past where we want to be and we want to turn the kiln off as soon as possible. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some kiln packs. I'm going to put all three cones on a stand here to make it. And I'm going to put them in my kiln at uh, by the peephole so I can look in and see what the temperatures got to when I get close to the end of the firing. Now what I'm doing here is I'm adding some vermiculite to the clay. Because this clay is, is uh, hasn't been fired, it's going to go into a cone 10 kiln. I'm going to make a little stand for the cones to sit on so I can see them when I, as I get to temp. Now, the cones are designed to sit in a certain way so that they fall this way. So I make sure I get it facing the right way and I start with my cone 9 and I set it in here. Then I do my cone 10, set it in, and my cone 11 and I set it in the same way. Then once I get this all set up I use a needle tool and I poke holes in my pack to further help the clay uh, not explode while I'm firing. I'm going to poke lots and lots of holes in here and basically this is all there is to it. When uh, I have in my kiln two peepholes, one at near the bottom, one near the top. And so I can tell when I get to temp. Normally in a good firing, the top and the bottom are very close to being the same temperature. In my kiln, usually the bottom's a little bit hotter, which is quite common, but very little. Enough that it does not affect the work. There you go, there's my cone pack. Tomorrow I'm gonna to take it up to my kiln I'm going to fire the kiln and I'm going to use these and I'll show you what they look like tomorrow when they're done. Here's the kiln packed. In the kiln, all lined up with the bottom hole. Here's the kiln pack at the very top, lined up with the top peep hole. The bottom cones after completing the firing. The top cone after firing. Here's the kiln packs from yesterday's firing. What can I learn from it? Well, the first thing I learned is that, yes, the kiln, in fact, got to cone 10. The cone 10 c 
cone in the middle is bent just uh, perfectly to indicate that it's got to cone 10. The uh, second thing I can learn from it is that the top, uh, this pack here is the top, this one's the bottom, and the top one got ever so slightly hotter than the bottom of the kiln. And it's not enough to make any difference at all in the firing. So it was a very successful firing getting to the right temp. The other thing I wanted to mention is that just for fun, I put two pyrometers at the bottom of the kiln to see what would happen. And I followed them all the way up to they got to 2200 degrees and they quit. Uh, getting any hotter but I know the kiln got hotter because the cones shows me that they did the uh, other thing about the pyrometers was all the way up one one pyrometer read 70 degrees hotter than the other the moral of this story is that uh, I don't really trust pyrometers <laughs> I trust cones a lot more they're much more accurate and you can put them as many as you want all over the kiln and you can learn exactly where the hot spots and cool spots are in your kiln. So I hope you learned something from this video and uh, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.